promise you are. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's Angel in the Wiz. How are you? Good, how Good. are you? I'm fine, thank you. I've been waiting for it. I've been looking for yes. this. Because this is the beginning of a new season for us. Excellent. And yes, and, and, and new and new shows and new topics and everything. But oh, one thing. Before we go any further, there's one thing okay. I have to do. There is a young lady, and I believe her name is Ruth, I hope I got this right, who was way above and beyond the call of duty. She works in Manhattan Neighborhood Network. I called in, I was away, I was in Florida. And I called in, and I had a problem. She returned my call in about two hours. This was at night. She helped me. She solved my problem. That's great staffing, okay? So, Ruth, I want to thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Yes, okay? That was a great thing to do. And I really, really appreciate it. And it was way above and beyond the call of duty. And what was nice is she acted like this was just what she was supposed to do. So she was doing it. But she did it. You know how many times mm -hmm. you, you know I'm talking about, okay? Oh, yeah. Because you know these things. Okay, well, we're going to start this first show, the new season, about, we're going to talk about education. Okay, but, let's talk about education. We'll talk about education, but I have to ask you, I have to really start with this. You are a math teacher. Yes, sir. What doesn't that mean that you, but you must, so you must be good in math. Yes, I'm good at it, yes. Not okay. fantastic, but good. Okay, but, but this doesn't it require, and because I, I don't know, remember, mm -hmm. ignorance, doesn't it require you to be good at math to teach it or not? Yes, you have to be understanding of the subject you're teaching. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's think, think of history and social studies teachers. Right, right, right. You can't possibly expect them to remember every major important date right. in world history, American history, right, right, right. And what else they have okay, to know. Right, right. Um, but you have to be able to understand it and you right. have to be able to find the specific resources and you have okay. to be able to build relationship with your students, your okay. students, so you can teach them. Okay. So I'm good at math, okay. I understand it and I teach it well. Okay, now you said something to me when we were talking one time about um, I never did well in algebra. Okay. Yeah, but just and just so you understand, we're going to talk about the, a much wider sphere than this in education. But right now, we have to get down to some nuts and bolts. Okay. Nuts I didn't do bolts. well in I didn't Numbers. do well in in algebra. Okay. I mean, I can add and subtract, multiply and divide, and all that stuff. I mean, That's I, a lot better than some of our students today. Really? Yes. Now, why is that? They're not getting it in the early grades. Why? Well, um. Or is it a lack of parent then helping out and being involved? Both. Okay. I think uh, teachers are are with the new initiative, and it, those of you who follow President Obama's um, education plan, the race to the top standards and things like that. They're. Uh, He's my favorite. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit later about Rick Scott then too. <laughs> um, um, but the the push is to have students understand more concepts and understand a lot about key concepts at earlier ages. Okay. So maybe they'll focus on a couple of um, you know, standards, what we, what we refer to in the education field as standards, okay. and we'll focus on maybe five or six key big ideas or big standards in okay. first grade and second grade, and then we expand upon those and add maybe a couple more and focus on those. Um, what is happening is uh, technology is huge, so right. teachers are introducing technology into the classrooms earlier, which is good, right. but students are losing that opportunity to do basic math functions, such Adds, as add, subtract, add, multiply, multiply, and divide yeah. single digits. Uh, up, you know, one through 12, zero through 12. Right. And it, yeah, oh, like, why, because they use calculators? Because they use calculators. In, in little schools? In, in little, in, I in have high schools? school students, I have high school students. Uh, a teacher was telling me yesterday how one of her students said, um, didn't believe 
her when she said two times four is eight. He was insistent that two times four equals six. He was adding. And not had to get his not, calculator. That's not good. Yes. That's not good. How can kids like that go through life? I mean, they're going to run know. into a brick wall someplace. Right. Yes. Well, we can't have that. No. Okay, so at, at some point, you were, well, you were good in math in school, mm -hmm. and at some point you decided to go into teaching math? <laughs> You well, want the you want the real story? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well okay, you, give me give or me. Or do you your... want what's going to make the parents out there feel very comfortable with their child's education? <laughs> <laughs> no, because, well, I think they have to be more involved anyway. They do, family. they do. Okay. okay, they do. So what are you trying to tell me? You you threw snake eyes and I you had to go was, teach? You? No, I was a very very good student when okay. I and I knew at a young age that I wanted to be a teacher. Oh, okay. I knew it was I it just. What, what specifically I was going to teach was yet to be determined. Okay. And when I got to college and I researched, and I knew I wanted to teach high school. I wanted to be a high school teacher. I just didn't know what subject. Um, so when I got to college and I, I was looking at the course load for high school teachers and right. I went through the English and then I realized I don't really want to grade right. essays. And right. I like to read books for fun, not for analysis. Right, right, so right. Right. that's scratched out English. Okay. Social studies, not really good at memorizing those dates. Right. And sometimes, you know, as much as history shaped who we are, sometimes I'm just, it eh, does, it's yeah, boring. It's, it's boring. Okay. So scratch off the social oh. studies. Okay, great. <laughs> then I went to science, and I hate dissecting things. Yeah, I don't blame you. So too. scratched off science. Okay. Not good at foreign languages. There went that. Okay. Not athletically developed in any okay. way. I, never played on an organized team, Right. scratch that off. And so when you looked at what was left to teach at the high school level, it was right. math. And I was good at math. Yeah, and I was, and, I'm, <laughs> and I was good at math. I, I understood it. I understand right. it. So, so here I come, mm -hmm. and I, I had Miss McNamara, who's not... She must have been a good teacher if you remember her name. Or she must have made an impact on your life if you remember her name. Really? Yes. I remember that she was... It was it was a horrible class. I couldn't, I couldn't grasp it. And I think I also had a lot of kids in the class who I don't think, I th I should be, I've got to be careful because this was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I just remember that I couldn't get it. Right. And uh, she was not a very successful teacher. She was m much older now at this point in her life. And uh, there was a bunch of the kids that didn't seem to care, which has to be a part of kind okay. of a burden. All right. So, so, and I never got it. And I, I, I was, I have, I'm, I'm one of those people that can learn some things that needs specific, step okay, by step, step by step, and then here's the process. Right. You know. And usually, if I can, once, if once I can get it, I can apply it. That's always been my gift, applying mm -hmm. what I know. Uh, so anyway, so the short version is, I never got into, uh, I didn't do well in algebra. But you said that. What were you, you, were too, you were trying to make the point that algebra is things that we probably do anyway, but we don't think of it as calling it algebra. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Think of... Illustrative example. Think of, um, and this is the best one, you, you're balancing your bank accounts or you're looking at your okay. bank statements or you're trying to budget how much you can, you know, you want to buy a new laptop or computer yeah, okay. or big screen Something. TV. Okay. Yeah, you, you have to go in and you have to budget that. Right. And so what you're doing in your head without even realizing it is, well... I've got this much I have to pay, you know, I make this much money, I have to pay this car insurance, this car loan, this electric bill, this bill, and and then I have to make sure I save this much, so how much can I actually put aside? So you have it, and so when you get down to it, those algebra skills where you learn like, you know, A plus B plus C equals, right. you know, right. you're using that. You have those unknown variables that, okay. you know, how much can I save each month right. based on this information? That's the algebra. Oh. You use it every day. Far out. And, and th for those of you that think you <laughs> still have money if you have out. checks. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. For those of you who think if you have, you have money left because you have checks, this is not going to help you. No. Okay. But so, so yeah, because the X, the unknown, is what we're trying to figure out. Yeah. How much we how can much afford to put aside. Yes. See, if they had ta taught me about big screen TVs, I could have been really good in math. Did they have color TVs back then? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of really not cool for it, you know. When I started watching TV, it was a little 13-inch TV, and I sat right in front of it, and I watched people like Howdy Doody and Google Friend and Ollie, who you don't even know who they are. That's how old it is. 
My mom okay. used to have a black and white TV in the kitchen. We'd watch the news every morning in Chicago. Yeah, right. But that was, you know, that was, you know, 1980s. Yeah, but that was the black and white in the kitchen. You probably had a color one in the other room. Yeah. See, when I started, they didn't. All have you had was color. a little black. And All white. they had was a little black and white TV, and it was a, and it was little and small, two, 13 inches. But I was very happy to have it. I could watch the kids' shows, okay. The howdy so, duties. The howdy duties and stuff like that. Then you can make go ahead and make fun of, but that's all right. I don't mind. You want to get them to of my those, age. It's classic TV. You know, yeah. Well, you know, listen. I, I had no idea I was ever going to live this long. Okay, and then I found out Zachly who watches the show. He's hi Zach. Hi Zach. Zach, Zach watches the show. He's ninety three. <gasps> what does that mean? Does You've got that, a long I way mean, to go then. That's frightening. That's frightening. How do you play for? Oh, so but the point of what I was trying. Yes. <laughs> The answer is, I started with black and white, and we went to a color. I remember when we got our color TV, it was a very big deal and everything else, but we didn't do any math based on those types of problems. Now, yes. why are we talking about education? Because Miss Tinkerbell over here showed me one time when we were talking something that I did not know, and it's important that you know, and I even pulled it out and used it on some people when they were listening to comments being made. So... This is this is one of this is one of the important things about education that I want to make sure we cover because we have an, an authority, kind of a source authority here with us yes. today. Okay, so now when we get compared to other countries, mm -hmm. everybody says they do much better than us. And you explain to me why? Why? I want okay. you to explain. To I will them, explain to them. To you. Why. Okay. Thank you. So the big thing we have to remember what our forefathers set for us when they built this country is that we give, the United States of America gives a free education to everyone. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter where you live in this country. We right. will supply you with a free education up until the time when you're approximately 18 when you graduate from high school. Okay. Um, so K through 12. K through 12. Is there. It's free. Okay. Okay. And by law, with um, President George W. Bush put in the No Child Left Behind Act, right. and with President Obama's race to the top, right. we have to test every student right. to see their grade level, and it's, it's just high stakes standardized testing. Okay. Um, they Which do we can that, talk about. right? Would, okay. But they and those are the scores that they use. Right. So every child in America gets a free education, and they get tested, and those scores get recorded. Okay. Okay. So we got that set aside. Right. Let's go to a country, say, Germany. Okay. Germany has a free education, but at about eighth grade, they start tracking their students. Okay. They look at who is high achieving, who is middle ground, who is low achieving. Low achieving students finish middle school, go to a couple years of high school, and then are kind of sent into the workforce okay. or the military. Okay. The mo that's Do they the have military. any say in it? Just curious. They might. Okay. Maybe that might be some financial influence. Okay. The middle group kind of goes into the workforce, okay. okay? And then the higher level group continues on for the rest of high school, goes into the college. That high level group is this group that's getting their test, that, that is taking those high stakes standardized testing. Okay. And the, that's whose scores we're being compared to. So here we have 100% of our student population right. is being tested, scores being recorded. You go to Germany or China, okay. we're a huge country, not everyone can afford the education, so right. not everyone takes those tests. Right. We're looking at maybe the top 20% of their student population okay. is being tested right. and recorded. So yes, their scores are higher than ours. But yeah. if you were to take our top 20%, okay. our scores would probably equal, be equal or a little bit higher. Higher than this. Yes. So, in other words, w the rest of the world is choosing their top 20 mm -hmm. against our, our 100%. 100%. Now, feel free to research that. <laughs> <laughs> Just like because, Glenn Beck. Don't trust us. Find out for yourself. <laughs> because that was, you know, that's information that I've gathered over the years, but as with our education system, things change daily. Right. So that policy might have changed in the countries that I referenced, but I do know okay. I do have friends that have taught in other countries and okay. I've we've discussed it and they said, "Yeah, that's pretty accurate that kids get tracked and maybe not the the lowest, you know, the top third, but we're looking at maybe the top two thirds get recorded scores and then we get the 100% recorded." Okay. So. Now, you say you talked about this high is it high, high stakes? High stakes standardized okay. testing now, is what we call it. 